Hey chess lovers, welcome back to the chess yard. This is Dehre Bagga, and today I'll be showing you one of the interesting chess games that I played a couple of days back. Now this was rapid, uh, 10 plus 5, uh, 5 seconds increment that means, and it started off with knight f3 by my opponent. I responded with c6, opponent goes c4, and I went for d5. Opponent can take here, but decides to play b3 instead, trying to solidify and protect the pawn. Uh, so I played d4, making sure that the pawn is not cannot be exchanged, and I'm uh, blockading this bishop's diagonal as well eventually, which will be fianchetto from uh, uh, b2 most likely. And that's what happens, bishop b2. And then I play c5, making sure the pawn uh, chain is solid here. Uh, open plays e3, trying to uh, capture the center pawn, which uh, I thought I will just pin the knight for now. Uh, and open tries to kick me back. That's what happens, and then open expands on the king side, uh, due to which I was about to lose. Uh, I was about to lose the center pawn. So here in the game, I thought, what if I take the pawn first? Uh, because yes, I will lose the bishop, but what I can do is take on another pawn, and open will lose the castling rights. The king would be vulnerable, and maybe I can take advantage of it. That was bad actually for black here. Uh, engine is already saying uh, plus four uh, in favor of white. But I thought that this position was playable. That's why also because uh, h5 is a weak pawn now and can be captured. Now I went with knight f6. Opponent decides to play d3. And I captured that extra pawn which was hanging. And then knight to c3 by opponent. And I went with e5. Uh, asking opponent to take here uh, because once opponent takes with the knight i had queen d4 hitting check and the knight would be gone too so any any bad move here opponent can fall into further troubles as well i can now give another check first and then maybe once opponent moves now i can take and it's a pretty decent position i have made the comeback of the lost piece already so that was the plan behind play, uh, playing e5 there, giving away the pawn. Opponent decides to play knight to uh, d5. Uh, and here I played f6, trying to defend the pawn. Now again, opponent had some tactics by taking on uh, the pawn, because then my uh, knight was hanging. And that's what exactly happens. Now I can take back the knight. But I lose my knight with check. Uh, the king is already here. Uh, the knight, other knight is also here only. The rook will come flying in onto e1. And suddenly my king will be in a lot of trouble. Which already the king is. So I decided to play g6 trying to defend my knight. Uh, and here open goes back with the knight to f3. And I played queen d6 trying to get my queen active. Maybe give a check from g3 now. Uh, opponent decides to play rook to g1, preventing me from doing that. And then I finally tell up the knight on d7, preparing to castle. Opponent plays d4, trying to break open the pawn, and I castle queen side. Opponent does take the pawn, which I take back with the knight. Now my knight is in the vicinity of the king uh, for giving a check in one move. Uh, so queen comes to d4, preventing me from doing so. Uh, and since queen came there, I had thought of uh, controlling this diagonal because yes, I can play pawn forward and the knight would be defending the bishop so opponent cannot take back and will lose the queen at least. Uh, opponent didn't bother to uh, re remove the queen from there but instead attack my knight. Now knight is being attacked twice and defended only once with the queen. Uh, so I thought, let me give a check. Yes, my queen is hanging, but opponent cannot take because it's a check. Uh, so opponent has to take the knight, which does happen, and I take the bishop. So a fair trade-off, uh, yet I'm still behind in the game till now. Uh, it's move number 20 already, uh, 21, sorry. Now opponent uh, plays a knight to e7, giving me a check. And as soon as that is played, did you see the evaluation change? From plus 3.7, it goes to minus 1.6. Despite the opponent is giving a check. So that's how quickly one move changes the evaluation for around like five points in the game. And now that's all you need when you are down uh, and, and being attacked completely. One small mistake, if your opponent does, 
you want to capitalize it. I played king b8, which was the probably the only move. I don't want to take my uh, king over to c7, of course. Uh, so I and then opponent plays bishop g2. That was again a strange move because uh, when opponent was thinking here in this point of time, I was calculating my perspective as well. What all things I can do here. So I had a couple of moves. Uh, one was queen on to b2, which looked very nice, giving a check, threatening a rook. But that can be saved with bishop to e2. And then I cannot take the rook as well because the rook defends. So that was one of the moves which I can play. The other move I was thinking was a rook uh, h8 to e8. So that I am attacking the queen. Uh, I am just pinning this knight because my queen also hits it. So I have a couple of pieces attacking it once I place rook onto e8. So these were the options I was uh, exploring. And then I saw there's one more move here, which is f5, which attacks the queen and also hits the rook with the bishop. So when you think uh, thoroughly in a game, in a middle game, you would explore a lot of options. So when I was exploring options, I found this was not the best one because it can be defended. Even if queen comes in between, not the bishop, which happened after. Uh, so my opponent played the next move as bishop to g2. Now I can give a check, but again, queen comes in between and most likely then queens will have to be traded off. Uh, and then I'm not going anywhere in this game. Uh, and I'm not comfortable about it. Yes, rook can be played, pinning the knight, but I will win a knight from it. So I thought, let's win a rook at least for the... Uh, and I played f5 here, attacking the queen as well as attacking the rook. So that was one of the interesting moves that gave me more advantage. Here, queen goes back and I get the rook first, which opponent does take back with the rook. And now the knight is hanging. So I took on the knight as well because I had deflected the queen earlier. So I got a couple of pieces for a bishop, which is always nice. And now I'm in complete control. I'm uh, minus eight. So it's black who is leading the game with extra rook there. Uh, so what happens next is opponent tries to attack my queen and I give a check from the diagonal. And now notice how rook on, uh, sorry, the knight on h5 is also important because I am one square away from giving a check if my opponent goes anywhere. That is a checkmate actually. So now if the opponent moves the king, it's a checkmate. So if king goes here, it's a simple checkmate from g3. If the opponent king goes again uh, to e2, it's a checkmate because I'm controlling the D file. The open file control is already there. The diagonal is controlled and the knight uh, and my knight is controlling the other two squares. So everything is controlled. That's why it's a checkmate. Again, if even if uh, opponent had some space, I had the other rook lined up as well. So suddenly out of nowhere, I have gained complete control and opponent saw that coming. Uh, maybe didn't see that the opponent can play rook to e3 or maybe there was a resignation deep down inside because after a move like pawn forward, the rook is going to go as well. So I thought of resigning and did so. I hope you like the video. Uh, do let me know your feedback. Keep watching and sharing. Do subscribe to the channel if you haven't already by now. And I shall see you tomorrow again with some instructive and interesting content. Thank you so much for your time. Take care. Bye-bye.